Well, we continue to search for answers in this uh, post-mortem of the Nets postseason failure. First team since 1985 at least to be the preseason betting favorite, not so much as win a game in the playoffs. These Brooklyn not Nets. A game. What does it mean for the Nets? What does it mean for the league? What does it mean for super teams? And this time for Real Talk presented by Capital One. And who better to have real talk with than our boy Jerry Brewer of the <laughs> Washington Post? But listen, before we even get into the Brooklyn Nets, we gotta we gotta walk down memory lane. We gotta go down memory lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. This this, <laughs> this this young kid from New Orleans, this kid, this this sophomore in, in college from New Orleans gets out of 30 applications for an internship, gets uh a summer internship with the Boston Globe sports section. And um, Jerry Brewer and I are on the phone and he's like, you know what, man? Here's what you got to do when you get up to Boston. You got to hit up this dude, Michael Holly. Michael Holly <laughs> won, won a Pulitzer Prize uh, at the Akron Beacon Journal. He's a columnist with the Boston Globe. Sports Illustrated's hot after this brother. Like, that should be your mentor is Michael Holly. <laughs> so in many ways, in many ways, Brother from another does not exist without Jerry Brewer bringing Brew. the Michaels together. And that is real talk brought to you by Capital That's One right talk. there. Thank you, Jerry Brewer. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, Jerry Brewer. How you doing? Listen, um, I'll take my 5%. I'll give you my address and I'll take my 5%. <laughs> <laughs> Just get hey, it to man, me by June first. All, <laughs> Brew, like, what, what's taking you so long, first of all, to come on the show? I think this is your brother from another debut, if I'm not mistaken. So should been, he should have been in the premiere. Come you on, know, man. Like, uh, We're coming up on two years. I was on it one time, but Karin Phillips and, and Vinny Goodwill hosted oh. the show. So I, I was all excited. I was like, I'm going to see Michael and Michael again. It's going to be like, and, we and we, the, and we, we, Kyrie Irving this thing. We were like Kyrie and Katie. We ain't play. We ain't show up. And we y'all you know, like, didn't yeah, show up. Yeah. And, and that was like right after they had traded for Harden. And I told mm. Karn and Vinny, you can go back and look. It's the big three that will never be. And they weren't. And and now they got a whole a whole mess of problems beyond that. They're never going to win a championship with that group. Never. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Mike. You, you go ahead, Mike. Right. You talk, yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know who. Don't know who look, I don't know who needs to hear this, but <laughs> I, I guess I, I guess you know what it is, Brew. I mean, like, I, you know, I'm the gullible oh, one wow. between the two of us on, on this here program. I yeah. guess it's like, you know, it's like, what's the alternative? Because I'm looking at it like, if you're the Nets, like, I, I would not want to give him five years, two hundred fifty million dollars for obvious reasons. Talking about Kyrie Irving, if he in fact opts out and becomes a free agent, right? But despite his protest to Vinny Goodwill. That's KD's franchise. The Nets aren't about to say, hey, sorry, KD, your road dog, your brother from another Kyrie, we just gonna let him walk. So unless Kyrie decides to play under this one year deal, or unless he decides to take less money, Kyrie's gonna be there because Kyrie wants to be yeah. there because he has his run of the place. So those two dudes coming back make them formidable. I have no idea what's going on with Ben Simmons back. I have no idea what's going on between Ben Simmons ears, but if I don't know it's a big if they're able to add Ben Simmons and bring back Joe Harris with the wait for it, Michael, the Bruce Browns of the world, you know, yeah. uh, we'll see what Patty Mills decides to do. I got it's unrestricted just, free agent though. They may not be able to afford yeah, Bruce Brown. Yeah, they may not be able to afford it. I guess yeah. I'm just like, I think they still got to be in the contender conversation. They yeah. haven't done it yet. And they haven't been re reliable to even show up and play together. But if, if, if it was a fifth, my aunt had, I know, if they are healthy next year, physically and emotionally and mentally, I mean, that's, that's still a pretty formidable group, is it not? It is a formidable group, and they will be a contender for as long as KD is a great player. I mean, but there's a big difference between contender and bona fide favorite that can finish the deal. There's always yeah. going to be something with Kyrie. There's always been something with Kyrie, so there's going to continue to always be something with Kyrie. There's a certain drama around Ben Simmons, and there's a certain softness to him, period. And then you add the fact that Kevin Durant, my second favorite player of all time behind Magic Johnson, love him. Absolutely love all his time. game. 
of all second oh, favorite player oh, wow. of all time. Second favorite yeah. wow. player of all time. Second favorite all player time. of all time. That's a, all time. Smokes. That's a big one. I, I, where did, I've wait, got a tremendous... wait, where did that come from? Like why? Why did is his game? Like why did you fall in love with Kevin Durant it, so much? It, his game, obviously he was in Seattle with, with the last Sonics team. Yeah, but beyond that, like I've got a, a, a real preference for overskilled, oversized players. Magic Johnson mm-hmm. as a 6'9 point guard. Kevin okay. Durant as a, as a seven Johnson. foot two guard who can play any position. So right. um, Giannis will, is quickly becoming third on that list for me, uh, my, among my favorites. And he's another oversized, overskilled guy. The thing with Kevin, however, when, when I look past my love for him, he's about to be 34 years old. Um, before next season begins. All these lower leg injuries, you know, the knee, uh, the foot, the Achilles, uh, there's always something every year with him. Now you have to look at Kevin Durant and say, he's a 65 game player. If you can get 65 regular season games out of him, you gotta feel great. Is that enough time for he and Kyrie to mesh? Kyrie has a injury history. Ben Simmons is someone who now has missed two years, two entire seasons of his career, and he's got a bad back, and athleticism means everything to him. Joe Harris is going to be coming off a big injury. they got a lot to do. Yes, if you could put, I love the idea of having Curry, Irving, Ben Simmons, uh, KD, and Joe Harris on the floor in a small ball lineup to finish games with all that shooting around Ben Simmons and Ben Simmons' ability to guard one through five. I just don't know if we're ever gonna see that team in full for long enough for them to thrive during playoff time. So tell me, tell me let, how let you- me, let me, let me, Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 ahead. Well, I, I just gonna say for both of y'all, but, but no, for both time, of y'all, for, for, bo- for both of y'all on the Nets, I guess it's like, you know, we joked about it earlier, Brew, like, you know, this gang up on Shelby day for the Nets. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like everybody, everybody piling up, to, <laughs> lining up to slander KD and Kyrie as if like, you know, we wasn't just in all Kyrie's 60 it's, point games. It's as, funny if, the second, as if KD it's funny the second time. <laughs> <laughs> as, if, as, as if, as if KD, you know, didn't put forth an all time great performance trying to knock off the defending champions in the playoffs last year. It just felt like KD in particular, and I'll just focus on KD because Kyrie's polarizing. He's aggravating. He's a contrarian. He's annoying. You know, uh, you know, he, he wanted away from LeBron. He, you know, he, he, he said one thing to Boston. Like, okay, Kyrie's got is, is not the most popular guy. Even though he's hit one of the greatest shots of all time and LeBron doesn't win a championship in Cleveland without Kyrie. Make no mistake about it. But let's just hone in on your second favorite player of all time, Kevin Durant. I guess the thing that puzzles me, and maybe I'm overstating the tweets or the post or the commentary from just some corners. I thought at this point Kevin Durant would be Teflon. I know he left a three, uh, 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 blowing a three-one lead in Oklahoma City and joined the Warriors who had already won one. I get it, but he was a two-time MVP. He wasn't nobody's bus rider on that team. A two, two-time Finals MVP. He wasn't nobody's bus rider. It, it fascinates me the amount of slander Kevin Durant has taken throughout this series after the first sweep of his career. What's that about? Well, number one, he didn't play well. Uh, and Boston yeah. had a fantastic game plan. They gave him, they were physical with him. They gave him every possible look, um, changed defenders. And he just, he, for the first time, uh, he just looked uncertain. It very much reminded me of LeBron, his first season with the Heat in the, in the 2011 finals when the Mavs mm-hmm. went to that zone against him. And LeBron would right. before, before get the he ball. Had a jumper. He, would, he would hold it, and he couldn't figure out what he wanted to do. And there were a lot of times in that in that series where Durant, he'd get it, he's over-dribbling. There would be a guy open in the corner, he wouldn't pass it to him. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, if they're just going to... And, and, and sometimes it was Seth Curry who was open. It's like, why are you not passing to, you know, this phenomenal 43% mm-hmm. three-point shooter? Uh, so he was lost in his head, and I get it. Uh, he's a lightning rod. Uh, ever since he blew that 3-1 lead in Oklahoma City and then went to the Warriors, uh, there's kind of this idea that he can he can do no right. 
Um, even though he's, okay. to me, he's like guaranteed top 15 all time. If he never picks up a basketball again, maybe some other people would argue that, but I'd be like, go ahead and give you, give me the other maybe 15 higher. guys. And maybe uh, may higher, and, Brew. Maybe even higher than 15. Yeah, I mean, I think if he, if he found a way to win a championship in Brooklyn and get number three, I mean, he's really knocking on that door of, of top 10 to me. Um, he's phenomenal, but it, it's, it's easy to pick on him. Uh, you see this skinny guy, this score, and uh, he made a really poor decision. I mean, it's just, it's not a smart, it's not a smart business move to leave Which Steph one? Curry and Golden State oh, okay. after you took, you took all that to go to Golden State. And you leave yeah. them clearly, but as we're seeing now, before they're done, to go try to create something with the biggest narcissist and least reliable <laughs> high reputation <laughs> star in the NBA. <laughs> and a guy who, let's face it, the Celtics have been really better. Sure, the Celtics were better yeah, without yeah. Kyrie when he was there. Right. The Nets when he last was there. year. Yeah, <laughs> when he was there. The Nets last year when Kyrie got hurt still you know, where it's a size 18 shoe away from oh, there it is. going we to don't the bring, We don't bring finals. that up around here. We don't bring that up around here, We don't bring that up. We don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno or the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it is gang up on oh. Shelby Day. And, and, I mean, like, I love oh. Shelby, but I ain't trying to marry her. Okay. Well, listen, it, you know? I would have, I would have, you know, Bruno, I, well, I, just to close that circle, I was always uh, a, a Shelby fan. Well, I got to tell you this. Drama uh, Bruno, and all. I don't uh, blame her. Michael Smith. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Well, Michael Smith really hates. He hates uh, a certain cackle that I have. It is a <laughs> I told you so cackle and he just like he, he just covers his ears when I do it. And the, the last time I gave it to him, really, I, I think one of the last times was when James Harden was traded to Philly. Because the window, like Mike, it's over. It was over then. Like even if the if, if the Nets had beaten for Brooklyn, for Brooklyn, even if they No, you when, don't when get to say I told Harden, you so. The only thing no, no, you get to I say told, I told you so I told about you so is, the, is Boston being better. You were saying no, that no, these no, people no, should on. fear them, Michael. You were saying no, no, at the I end said, of the season that nobody yes, wanted to see Brooklyn say, in the playoffs. I didn't say they were a championship team. I'm telling you, when they traded their whole idea, they went all in for three guys. It was KD, Kyrie, and Harden. That was the plan, and that was and that was a little shaky plan to begin with because if it, you want to take credit, involve defense. If you want to take credit, if you defense. want to, if you really want to take credit, Michael, but if you really want to take that credit, that was their narrow path. You said that was their narrow path. You said. It. From the very beginning, when they came together, that they wouldn't win. Right. Okay. If want, but if, if they know, had a chance, so, I mean, but if they had, but any chance they had of winning a championship, really mm -hmm. had to involve all three of them. And once they got rid of James Harden, then that was it. Like if they beat in Boston, they still weren't going to win the championship. They they play Milwaukee again. They face Milwaukee and lose. So. I don't know. Well, I, I think it I actually on. think it was I actually think it was I think it was over for the Nets the minute they decided to trade all that depth for Harden. I knew that Harden, Kyrie and KD were not going to work out. Uh Harden does not want to be a secondary type player. Uh Joel and B will find that out soon. Um and it's just a bad mix of personalities. There's no leadership uh, there's not enough, uh, especially among James and Kyrie defense. It just wasn't going to work out. And they had this complement of guys. What made it interesting when Kyrie decided to go to Brooklyn and bring KD along with him was that they had gone through all the pains of losing all those draft picks to, to Boston and having to draft late. And they came up with Karis LeVert and Spencer Dinwiddie in the second round and uh, late first round pick on – Jared Allen and then they had they had the Joe Harris's and a couple of other guys and now all of a sudden they went all in on this big three idea and two of those big three are like incredibly unreliable and then it was inevitable that James was going to ask out once you saw just how weird everything was 
and now they're really stuck. And so, somehow, so let me somehow they 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 took one of the teams that that had ideal depth for this era. When you look at all mm -hmm. the teams that are prime contenders, they're teams that 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 have really nice eight nine man rotations, and they've got two stars, but they're more organically built. And so they took everything organic about that team and just made this big trade that in this Great era, point. like I'm talking about Great point. post Toronto Ooh, Raptors point. NBA, yeah. ever since Kawhi and the Raptors won and Golden State broke up, you don't have to have three. I would rather have two and a great rotation. And they were well on their way to doing that, uh, but but they kind of ruined that. Well, and then second. it's gone hey, to hey, another well, level with like Kyrie only playing 29 games this year. So that, that brings me to the, the bigger picture and your column in the Washington Post that the NBA super team era is fading. I guess I would ask this. All right, I'll go along with you with the purpose of this conversation. The Nets will never win, which would make this experiment a failure. But do you blame them for trying? Hindsight's 2020, and some people had the foresight to see this coming. Some people had, no, I'm serious, Michael. Some people had the foresight, I'm talking yeah. about you, yeah. to, to see yeah. that this would not happen, that, this, that, that, that they wouldn't yeah. win this thing. Yeah. I don't blame them for thinking that a hardened Kyrie, Katie triumvirate would be devastating enough to win a championship. And for the 16 or 17 games they played together, they were damn good. This team did not this team did not come up short of, of championship expectations for lack of talent or lack of ability. They were just never together. They mm -hmm. were never together enough to actually see it through. So I don't know that the idea of, of, of assembling three stars is an antiquated one, Brew, because even in, in Milwaukee, how, it's, it's how you go about getting them. However you go about getting it, so be it. Okay, because even in Milwaukee, they didn't win nothing until they got Drew Holiday. You know, they had right. Middleton and they had Giannis that home grown, but they got Drew that Holiday. Third. In yeah. Phoenix, they may have drafted DeAndre Ayton and, 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 and Devin Booker, but they became complete when they got Chris Paul. But you know, look what I, they I did, still, though. But look how they got them, though. But in your, in your examples, they of, drafted of, of those Chris two. Paul, yes. They added, they added Chris Paul. They didn't give up Cam Johnson and Cam. They didn't, add, they didn't give up their depth. And the same thing with uh, no Milwaukee doubt. with Drew Holiday. They gave up a lot of future picks, but they didn't give up a lot of depth to get. Drew Holiday. So, uh, so that's what I said. It's a matter of how you get them. But the idea that three stars, I think it's the th it's, I'll say this to you, Brew, and I'll pass it to you. I think it's the right three stars that fit. Mm -hmm. And let's go back to the Heatles. That wasn't LeBron, Wade, and Bosch having their run of the place, not on Pat Riley's watch. Maybe it's not yes. just the right three stars, but how those three stars mesh with management Ooh. because yeah, I don't yeah, think it's any yeah, coincidence. Yeah that the Nets are at home and so are the Lakers. Yes, after that, I think after you, LeBron pushed for Russell Westbrook. I think you really hit on on that point and it was like asinine to me after the game and I thought there were some moments when Kyrie was pretty introspective uh, about what went wrong and his role and what went wrong. But then he starts talking about me and Kevin and Joe and, and Sean Marks <laughs> like getting together to really manage this thing. I and love like, it. I love it. I love it. And it's like, come on, man. Like you're a damn fool here. Okay. Um, this was the problem. You know, LeBron and the Heatles, LeBron goes to Miami. LeBron didn't get to do everything he wanted to do. I mean, he would have probably gotten Eric Spolster fired in year one. If Riley would have let him, that didn't happen. He had to do things for the heat that made him a better player that led to him being able to win a championship in Cleveland. And so even though they were built in this strip it down and add two star multiple all stars, that's kind of the super team model. Just take everything down and get multiple all stars together. Even though they did that, they still had a culture that they had to adhere to. Kevin Durant going to a championship level 73 and nine Warriors team. He had to come in and he had to learn to play a different style of basketball to really play in that, you know, incredibly read and react fluid NBA style Princeton ish offense. And he didn't like it enough to stay for more than three years. But guess what? He did it. He won two championships. He got two finals MVPs. 
he should have taken that knowledge from winning the title to Brooklyn and realized like you have to do it within a structure. Kyrie should have been able to take that knowledge from winning a championship with LeBron in Cleveland and come to Brooklyn after that disaster in Boston with some humility and realizing we have to like bring our unique talents, but we have to be willing to be molded into a structure. They didn't do that. And so I think the difference between this version of a super team and the Heat and say the, the Warriors with KD and, and even the Lakers, uh, once they got, they got AD and LeBron together is there was a sacrifice. And it wasn't always just the stars doing everything they absolutely wanted to do. When you have those moments mm -hmm. where you bring them together and you don't house break them, to be honest, and like tell them this is the way things are gonna go, that's when you have problems. Because yeah. there, there, there are a lot of amazing basketball minds among superstar players in the NBA, CP and LeBron and KD right. and Steph and so on and so right. forth. Not, none of them can be the GM of a multiple championship team. The ones that have been given that absolute power to try, the only one who did it was LeBron, and he had to come back 3-1 from the Warriors, which was more about stepping over Draymond Green, getting him kicked out of the game, and just things going <laughs> bad. Like, like that, that yeah. was just like, you know, in, in a lot of ways, like it was impossible to repeat that comeback that they had. So yeah. you you got to, I mean, it goes back to that, the, the Jordan, Jerry Krause argument about uh, organizations, organizations win championships. Organizations win championships. Yeah. yeah. Organizations yeah. with phenomenal talent that is willing to bend a little win championships. Right. It's, uh, it's it, this era of, of, of player empowerment. It's just interesting. And you see it in the NFL too. It's like we, we're yeah. the new age yeah. of player empowerment. It's like, what, what, what is that line? Where it's like the teams have to take control and be like, nah, just like catering to you in order to get you to come to our franchise. Will we actually reach the ultimate goal if we don't do it, as you said earlier, organically? And that's uh, that's real talk presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Jerry Brewer, you are money, my brother. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Jerry Brewer, good to see you, Anytime. man. Anytime. Good to see you, too. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.